the whole entire front of the cab is completely burnt. This is the DIY PCV reroute for basically free. So you got an impact there. All right, so the truck's running. Everything seems to be good. There's a little bit of smoke coming from back there. So here is the donor truck for the bed. As you can see, this one we just picked up. The whole entire front of the cab is completely burnt, and I mean everything. Anything that is not steel is melted. So you got an impact there. But it just melted everything. Open the hood here. Look under the front, had to put some tires in the front of it because they were melted as well. Used to be a 6.6 Duramax, now it is a bunch of garbage. <laughs> but that's okay because we just bought the truck for the bed, and if you look at the bed, it is beautiful. All these plastic sides are intact, no cracks. These beds always crack. Tail lights are good, tailgate is good, rear bumper is good. If we look underneath, I mean, absolutely. No rust on this bed whatsoever. Very clean bed. The problem is, gotta get it off of this truck. The front's a little burnt here. Uh, peeled the rhino liner off of the inside, but we'll fix that and recoat the inside of this bed. Replace these two pieces on the top, but other than that, everything is in beautiful shape on this bed. Um, I've gone ahead inside, there was a transfer tank in the back and I slid that into the other truck right there. Um, that was laying sideways in this bed, so it dumped a good bit of diesel fuel into the back of this bed, so most of this is not water, most of this is diesel. Uh, and it's full of leaves and all kinds of garbage. So what I'm gonna do is I guess I'm gonna start shoveling as much of this out of here as I can. I'm gonna pull off the tail lights, the rear bumper, the tailgate, and the tracks for the gooseneck there and then try to get this bed unbolted and pull it off of this truck so that it can get painted and put on the other truck uh, as you can see got the bed off of it get a good look at the frame here it doesn't get much better for that for a truck that's 15 years old I mean there is pretty much no rust on this frame whatsoever all right, so another day here on the dually, and what I'm doing right now is getting ready to install the uh, bigger turbo inlet, and we're going to do an EGR delete on here. So all of that, all of this goes, EGR cooler goes. We have new replacement uh, pipe here. So there's one. Here's the bigger turbo inlet. And these are getting painted as well as these aluminum charge pipes here. So we got this one I've already pulled off. This one back here, I got this clamp off. I got the clamp down there, loose. So I gotta pull that off. These are all gonna get prepped. Remove this, remove this. They're gonna get painted and then everything's gonna go back on. Obviously I'll clean 
the end your bay out before everything goes back on. Get rid of this insulation that's falling down behind the firewall and just do a good cleaning on all this aluminum stuff up on the front that's got oxidation all over it. And yeah, so let me pull that pipe out and then we're gonna get all this painted. All right, so we got all the uh, charge pipes cleaned here, as you can see, down to bare aluminum on these. Uh, the ones that were painted were just scuffed. Everything is taped off and ready for paint. These are gonna be painted, I think it's called Pacific Blue Metallic. It's the new 2020 uh, GMC Blue. Um, so these are gonna get painted that blue and then um, hopefully, if the color comes out good, we're gonna paint the whole truck with that same color. So everything will match uh, inside and out. So I got the one pipe pulled off here. As you can see, this is your EGR. That goes to your EGR cooler back here. Uh, and then what it does is it takes exhaust gas, puts it right back into your intake, which is right there, and reburns it. But with that, it takes all the soot that builds up in your exhaust and basically feeds it directly back into your intake. So if you can see, if I wipe this rag here, that is what you are putting back into your intake with an EGR system. So this is why I'm getting rid of it. Uh, this truck does not have to pass an emissions test or it is registered. So I'm going to prolong the life of this engine by keeping that from happening because that is pretty disgusting. So this whole EGR cooler has got to come out blocker plate goes on that flange um, all of this comes out EGR valve comes out all that comes out and that new pipe you saw will go right here go over to the charge pipe down into the intercooler and no more soot into the intake of the engine So here they are, finished painted, as you can see, look at that, it's a nice color there. So next up, we will let these dry, and then I'm going to get them installed on the truck, clean up the engine bay, rip all that old insulation out, and go from there. So, we got all the intake pipes over here, uh, all painted and ready to go back on the truck. And as you can see, we've got the EGR cooler and EGR valve removed from the truck. Um, these four, there's two studs and two bolts that go on the back, and that goes up against that flange right there uh, on the exhaust. And those four bolts are a pain to get out because they go in from this way into the EGR cooler that way. So there's barely any room to go back there, but make sure you spray them with oil, get them all good to come out, and then uh, you'll get them out. Um, so that is what it looks like with the EGR cooler out. So next, I got a blocker plate that's gonna bolt onto that to block off that hole there. Uh, and then that stays open. All the pipes go, all the uh, charge pipes go back in, and the truck goes back together. Here's the old intake. Take this out of here. Now it's all full of water. Lovely raining outside. Beautiful Florida weather here. But uh, as you can see, there is a size comparison between the old and the new. Uh, if I flip it over here, it'll make a gigantic mess. So, there's the old, there's the new. New one is much less restrictive, so hopefully that will help keep temperatures down on the exhaust there and keep the turbo and everything cooler, but we'll see how that goes. So, I'm gonna stick this blocker plate in and start working on the charge pipes and the turbo inlet. All right, so excuse the rain noise, but we got the blocker plate installed back there. As you can see, the shiny plate on there. Uh, that has four bolts that go in from the back side. I reused the original gasket that was on there, as well as put a whole bunch of RTV in there. 
uh, gasket maker to make sure that stays sealed. We have the turbo inlet um, on, it's loose, but it's on there. Um, we have this is one of the new pipes because it doesn't have the EGR ports on it. So that is mounted. Um, the wiring harness used to go on top of this pipe in this big plastic thing here. And uh, I didn't like the way that looked, so I took that out. Um, rewrapped all those wires and tied them nicely down there out of the way. I think it just makes it look a little, a little bit cleaner down there. Um, so the only thing left um, is to get these two pipes on uh, that go to the intercooler with the boots. I already cleaned the boots. We're going to reuse the original boots because they look fine. And get those on, put the air intake back on and the air filter. And this should be finished for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those two pipes installed and we'll be back. So as you can see, all the intercooler pipes are on and clamped. Um, I stuck the air intake back on. Uh, it's not, the plate is not underneath it on this side because it has to come back out to work on something else, but that is on temporarily. Um, I did uh, crack one of the PCV lines uh, that those hook on right here, uh, so that has the cap in it still. Um, I have to order new PCV lines. Those ones are really old and brittle. They were supposed to be flexible and they were not flexible and it snapped. Um, as you can see, there's the blocker plate down there, so no more EGR cooler. I have the heater core uh, bypassed right now because one of those is snapped off uh, and that was like that from when I bought the truck and I have to order, they seem to be some sort of quick connect fittings. I have one there, the other one is snapped, so Right now, the heater core inside the cab is just bypassed. It just goes around and hooks back on down there. But we're gonna call that good for tonight. The truck should start up and I can move it again because everything's back together. And we'll work on this later. All right, so the truck's running. Everything seems to be good. There's a little bit of smoke coming from back there. Uh, it's just burning off all that uh, oil I put on those bolts when I took them out. I don't know if you can see in the video, but it's just smoking off of that back there. Um, but other than that, everything seems to be good. Truck's running good. So we're gonna call it a night, and I'll see you another day. All right, so it's another day working on the Duramax here. And yesterday when I was putting the EGR Delete on and the Turbo Inlet, this is the PCV hose, and these are like super hard and brittle. Uh, I guess just because they're old and I broke one of them. So here's the whole thing here I had it in the vise But that hose went on there And that went on there and one went to each side of the valve cover and they had these little Things on them with a bolt that holds them in to the top of the valve cover So what I've done this hose is like a hundred dollars and I'm gonna do a PCV reroute on this truck, so instead of venting it into the intake and filling everything with oil, I'm going to just vent it to the atmosphere. So I cut, these used to be on here, so I took and cut those off. And what I'm gonna do is slide, bolt these back into the valve cover, and this hose will slide over the end of these, and I'll clamp them on, and then those will just run to a filter or a catch can or something to keep oil from going everywhere if any oil comes through them. Not that that much should be coming through them, but this is the DIY PCV reroute for basically free. Because they make kits for this, but I'm making my own. So pretty much that just sticks on there like that. I'm gonna stick a hose clamp on it and then these hoses will route to a vent. So here is the truck all back together. We got all the pipes back in, intake in, everything back in. I've uh, put new O-rings on those transmission lines for the transmission cooler and the radiator because those were leaking and I gave it one quick wash. As you can see, the back wall is white back there. Um, it needs another good wash, but I'm just trying to get a layer off. Um, and I gotta clean up all this aluminum, all this oxidation on here. Gonna try to get that all cleaned up. And yep, yeah, got the PCV reroute so these are the two pcv lines they're just hanging down there they're gonna get a uh, catch can or something on there but for now they're just hanging down there so everything's closed but that is the way it sits for now i'm gonna work on the bed next try to get that moved cleaned 
and prepped for paint so that it can get painted. It's gonna be painted the same blue as those charge pipes and so is the whole truck. So that'll be the next step. All right, so we got the bed pulled under the roof here because it is raining like every day in Florida. And uh, went ahead and this back wall had torn uh, some of this, just have like spot welds in here in these little holes and it had torn it off and so that was a tear and that was because I welded that there because this was basically this was like over here because it had tore this weld along the seam here um, so now this is nice and strong I did the same thing on the other side and now I'm going to strip it take all the lights off decals uh, tail lights already off gotta take the fuel uh, fill cover off uh, and then this whole bed is being sanded down and prepped for paint. And then after that, it can go on the dually, which is over there behind the Mustang. 